Hello guys, welcome to Cartooning with Paul. Today, I'm going to show you how to draw Doc from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. So, let's get started. Hello cartooners. Yeah, like I said, we're going to draw Doc the Dwarf from Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Now, this cartoon actually comes as a special request from some new friends that I met while at work. Now, many of you already know that I am an artist over at the Animation Academy, which is an attraction over at Disney California Adventure in Disneyland. I'm an instructor who teaches you how to draw our favorite Disney characters. While loading in one show, I met Bart and Monica, two terrific people who have been subscribers and supporters of this channel. Hello, guys. I'm just getting around to this video now. Uh, well, at any rate, at the end of the show, I gave them one of my drawings, and we got to talking. Now, Monica loves the dwarves, so she's hoping to see more videos of how to draw the dwarves. So, let's just dive right on in. So, we're going to start with his underdrawing. Now, Doc is as Walt would say, the pompous self-appointed leader of the gang. So we're going to give him a pompous stance. So we're going to, of course, start with that circle. And then we're going to tilt his head down in one of the poses that are on his model sheets. And if you run an image search on Doc, this image will actually pop up. So we've got the basic head shape in there, minus the jowls. But now from there, we're going to give him an action line. And you notice that that action line curves out toward the top of, of this, uh, this curve here. Because we're going to push his waist forward, but we're also going to play into that top part to give his shoulders uh, a bit of a, a push forward because his waistline will still tilt downward. We will play with this. We'll pull the front leg forward a little bit like so, but then his back leg will also be forward. He's pushing out his waist for uh, superiority among the group. Now with Doc's arms and his legs, they're actually the size of his torso. So we're gonna measure his torso with my finger and thumb and bring it down. And his front leg will extend out and put his foot forward like so. Actually, we'll will bring his toes down a little bit. and But now we've got a good line of action here and we have the proportions okay. The knee will go here. But I pulled it back a little too far here. We're leaning it back, we're not pulling it back. There we go, that's much better, okay. So we want to make sure his knees line up, his calves will line up, and his feet will also line up. So we got the heel, we got the toes, and then this will all make sense in a little bit. I'm just kind of figuring out the pose for now. So now the arms are going to be roughly the same length as his legs. And with Doc, as you'll notice in the pose, he is asserting his dominance here as the leader by showing a little strength. His other arm will come out about this far. Now, he's going to be adjusting his glasses, so I'm going to put a circle in place for his hand, and then we will 
do some foreshortening here for his forearm. All right, so now that I've got all of this in place, I can go back in and draw in all of those details. Well, let's start with his head. So Doc's nose is a very bulbous, rounded, however you want to put it, nose. His nostrils come upward, but they get tucked in behind the main body of his nose here. Now his eyes are about a quarter of the height of his initial circle here. Uh, since we divided the circle already, we want the eyes to go no higher than halfway up this circle here. So, we'll draw in a nice thin oval on either side. You do want to make sure that they are spaced out evenly on either side of this initial construction line. But we also, because these are the, the style of the day, we do want to make sure that we show the roundedness here by kind of curving that eye a little bit. It will be more narrow than this one because we're pushing it a little bit into the background there. So the dwarves, because of the, the style back in the 1930s, we've got these very stylized cheeks here. They're not the most prominent feature on Doc. There are more prominent cheeks on Happy. But for here, we'll just give a little indication here. And then we're going to give him his smile. Now his smile, because he's tilting his head downward, the nose is taking up some of that real estate where you would see his smile. So we're just going to tuck the smile in from behind the nose here. But with Doc, we're also going to give him a little bit of a downturn toward the cheek ever so slightly you don't want him to look like he's frowning and below that we're going to give him a lower lip it's a nice thick lower lip but not too thick and then from there we're going to go with the cheek and we're going to give him these jowl-like cheek shapes. Now one here, and then the other one is going to be a little more relaxed over on this side. The smile is being pulled upward this way, so we've got a little more roundness here. This cheek will kind of relax a little bit. Fortunately, at this point, I see that that worry about the frown I'm not worried about it anymore. That smile turned out okay. So with Doc, we're going to give him some eyebrows. Now, he has some of the thinner eyebrows of the group. And then he has a little bit of a, a wrinkle or a muscle wrinkle right above those eyebrows. So now if we continue upward here, up of the side of the head we'll tie that down but now we've got this knit hat of his so we're gonna bring it in and then I'm gonna give that like a not a cuff it's like they rolled them a little bit so they have this like extra bit of fabric right over here so it'll give it a little bit of a of extra curve above the circle of the head now we're going to go back to that initial circle and we're going to darken in a little bit just like that you don't want to darken the whole thing because we've got a lot of open air here his hat somehow defies gravity and points upward and then we'll bring that down back to the circle. Now, I'm very lightly drawing here because not only do we have the bottom part of the hat, but we also have his beard, which needs to 
come out. And we want to make sure, out of all the dwarves, his beard stays the closest, I'm sorry, second closest to his head shape. I think Happy is the one with the, the shortest beard. But first, we're just going to lightly draw that in. That seems to be a good shape. So now I can draw those tufts of fur or hair. And you don't want to go too crazy with them. Just enough to remind you that that is a hairy beard. And now that I have that in, I'm going to draw in the bottom of the cuff of that hat. And then give it another indent right in there like so. Now we are missing a couple things on Doc's face. So let's just go over everything right now. Um, we've got a lot of overlapping shapes here. So let's start with the nose. Nothing overlaps the nose at all. So that's the first thing I'm going to dock it in. Now that I have that in, I'm going to give him his cheek and the smile line on either side. And then remember that that smile comes out from underneath the nose, like so. I'm gonna give him his lower lip. And his cheek, or the jowl. From there, give a little upturn in the hair. And then different tufts. And let's go back in here and draw that cheek. Now, I, I went too far into the cheek because we've got a hand to draw in here. So let's move on to other parts here. Let's go up here. We'll draw in the eye. And he's looking at you. And of course, like we say at the Animation Academy, you want to make sure that the eye is the darkest feature in your drawing. So that will remain the focal point of your sketch. Now we're going to draw in some eyebrows here. Now his eyebrows are colored in black. And then we've got those wrinkle lines above it. And then, cuff to his hat. Yeah, that's exactly what I want it to look like. All right, now he is missing some features on his face. For one, for some reason, and I'll call it a sign of the times, they gave the male characters three eyelashes back then. Today, they do not do that. And of course, the last thing we have to put on his face are his glasses. His glasses are three-dimensional. There is a, an edge to them. And they tuck right in right there. His other glass will go right here actually what his hand will be adjusting so I don't want to do everything but let's throw in some lines here you tell that there's glass there so there we go there's Doc's face now since I've drawn over it let's have some fun here let's draw in his hand so according to the sketch that I'm using for reference He's got, let's pull out the eraser. Let's erase some of this pencil here. It's easier with the black than it is with the, uh, the under drawing, the blue. It'll be fine. Okay, so back with the blue. If the glass lens is like this, his finger, his index finger will be right here. And then he's got his middle finger right here. 
I've already sketched out his thumb in here. Actually, let's bring the thumb down a little bit. And then his pinky is extended upward. He's a classy dwarf. <laughs> watch me get watch me get angry letters. You said dwarf too many times. <laughs> they suffer dwarfism, which is a real thing. There's trouble a brewing. So now let's darken in those fingers. Oh, that's a better that's a better pinky. Okay. Some under there. Let's see. I don't love that thumb. So he's got a forearm here. Oh, that's much better. And Doc, being the one that needs to assert his authority, is always rolling his sleeves up. So we've got to make sure that the sleeves are rolled up. And now that I've got that in there, I can add those last tufts of his beard. So now we've got the underdrawing of, of Doc. And actually, I'm going to round mine out a little more. He has two buttons in his tunic. And to be honest, his tunic is too small. So it's really pulling some stress on the fabric around this button here. So we'll give it some stress uh, wrinkles in here. He wears a belt and the belt buckle goes right about here. And again, his clothes don't really fit right. So he's really throwing some major stress on his belt. There we go. Okay. The belt cuts in. And then, let's see, let's bring... The belt comes up. Some fabric here. And then, like I said, he's asserting himself so the shoulders are back. His chest is out, his shoulders are back. And then the bottom of the tunic where it opens, some excess fabric. In like that. And now this will go like this. Let's see, not too much. Just enough to get the point across. Now, that initial circle I did for his belly wasn't exactly right. Oh, neither was that. Yeah, let's find it again. There we go. There it is. Too many lines. It's getting confusing. So I'm just going to darken in some of these lines now. I like where the tunic is. Let's do that. Let's put in that buckle here. Oh, that's it. That's it right there. Let's go back to those buttons. Okay. 
And now that we've got those in, let's darken in these lines for his legs. Again, we've got these muscular, squatty legs. Like so. We'll throw in the lines to this one as well here. And now the fun of the shoes. They're wearing these... I, don't, I suppose they're leather, but they always look like fabric to me. They always look very pillowy soft. So just go around that oval there. The brilliance in the design came from Freddie Moore. Now, Freddie Moore was not only the, the lead animator on the dwarves, but he was also the chief architect of the most recent updates to Mickey Mouse. I'm sorry, not the most recent. The most recent ones I don't like. He is the reason why Mickey has whites to his eyes. When they were originally going to animate the Sorcerer's Apprentice scene, uh, the sequence for Fantasia back in 1940. Rumor has it, and there's actually a lot of, a lot of evidence to it, that they originally thought that that Dopey should play the Sorcerer's Apprentice after the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And if you look at not only the costume of Mickey as the Sorcerer's Apprentice, but also his movements, you'll find a lot of comedic overstepping and a lot of running to catch up and uh, very sloppy or very broad movements that aren't necessarily... Mickey Mouse's style. I got a lot of emails asking how to draw Santa Clauses at Christmas time. You could actually use some of the dwarves and change their facial features, their mustache and beard a little bit to actually resemble a pretty decent looking Santa Claus. And there we have it. Guys, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about the channel. I want to thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you later.